Hello to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am club. It's lunchtime, it's uh, Thursday, there's a gentle uh, easterly breeze just blowing across the harbour. The cloud has been uh, partly blown away so the sun's broken through and it's turned out to be an awesome, a beautiful, the most beautiful autumn day here in Sydney town. Um, I'm over here at uh, Circular Quay, just next to wharf number three. I normally go to wharf number six, but uh, there's a generator making a lot of noise over there. So rather than uh, being be rather than being drowned out by all the noise, I thought I'd just come over here and uh, seek this little uh, area and deliver a Jim's 5am club from here. And today we're going through a book summary and uh, the book summary is entitled Stillness is the Key. So given the, given the title of Stillness being the Key, I think it's probably more appropriate to get away from all the noise and bustle and to at least have a, uh, a bit of opportunity here to deliver the book summary without too much drowning noise. Anyway, the book is uh, written by author Ryan Holiday. I'll just wait for these uh, young enthusiastic people to go past. It's lovely to hear laughing and uh, energy. Uh, what I'd do to trade to be young again, but uh, we'll just continue going along our path at the moment. So uh, this book here is all about stillness and the importance of uh, generating stillness and quiet in our lives in order to, uh, to build some perspective and to uh, help us get through uh, the, tr the, tr the tr uh, troubling times of our lives. So the first key structured point to come out of the book from R Ryan Holiday is that uh, we need to learn how to slow down in order to get through the difficult times because uh, the bottom line is that each and every one of us go through lots of easy times lots of uh, boring times but we're also struck occasionally hopefully just occasionally by difficult times and uh, the call to action here from the author is that uh, when you take time to slow down after any sort of issue you'll find the clarity and calm uh, that you need in order to make better decisions. Uh, this is an important point because quiet, stillness, calmness is necessary in order for us to, uh, to make some really, really good decisions. Uh, because when we're hyped up, when we're excited, when we're agitated, when we're operating at a higher frequency, what tends to happen is that our brains, our brains seems, seem to revert back to our reptilian basic state and we enter a state of fight or flight, which means that um, we're not all that capable or all, not all that able to uh, activate and, uh, and use our rational part of the brain. And we basically go back into a basic mode of flight or fight response which means that uh, the agitated um, state that we're in or the hyperactivity that we're in is not conducive for us making really really sound decisions unless of course those decisions are for our survival for our immediate survival where we either fight or escape so if we, make, if we want to make really, really good decisions, especially on complex sort of issues, then what we need to do is we need to slow down so that our brains, as we said before, can uh, access our, um, our neocortex or the new part of our brain. And we need to slow down in terms of our brainwave activity so that we can also access our subconscious where we uh, are able to uh, then gain um, a 
better foothold, so to speak, in terms of uh, our ability to be act rational and also our ability to tap into our subconscious source sources. Um, an example of this that the author uh, quotes in the book is J.F. Kennedy during the Cuban Missile Crisis where he was under tremendous, tremendous pressure but in terms, as opposed to reacting and as I said, going to his animalistic behaviours of fight or flight, what he decided to do was to try and gain as much calm as possible by spending as much time by himself in the rose garden and going for walks so that he could be calm, cool, calm and collected in order to make the best or better decisions that he could. So uh, the second structured point to come out of this book is where the author reminds us that for peace and clarity of mind we need to let ourselves have more silence and to avoid the, the noise, the white noise and all the other noise that uh, pollutes our, our environment and agitates the living daylights out of us. And the way we do this, according to uh, Ryan, is that we need to pay attention to our surroundings. Pay attention to your surroundings right now. Just have a look around. Have a look at the people, have a look at your surroundings, and just pay attention and be, become one with your surroundings, and just tap into your surroundings. Because what happens is that because we're inundated with distractions and silence and uh, sorry and and noise all the time, we miss opportunities for greater calm and simplicity, and we miss out on opportunities to uh, tap into our subconscious, to uh, pay more attention to what's going on around us, to uh, to help us at least have a, a basis. To, uh, to making better decisions. Some people, like monks, like very, very spiritual people, make silence an obsession. There's a, uh, there's a, um, a branch of Greek Orthodox um, monks which are called uh, Hesychists, uh, who, who thrive on Isichia, who basically talk very, very minim minimally and spend most of their time, most of their day in prayer, in silent prayer. Uh, there's also an example here which actually made me laugh. It really, it really caught my imagination. There's an experimental composer named John Cage who compo composed uh, some music which is 4 minutes 33 seconds long and is basically four minutes 33 of absolute silence. But it's so profound. His uh, composition is extremely profound because it, what it does is it enables us to understand and it brings to our consciousness that silence, absolute silence, doesn't really exist because that silent space that we, we, that we uh, invite is full of unexpected sounds. So if I remain silent, all of a sudden you'll hear all the sounds going on around me. So I'll just be silent for a second. So just by being silent, as you see, you can just tap into all of the other noises or sounds that are happening around us. And it is really, really interesting. It is quite calming. It is really, really calming. Even if you just stay silent for a minute, it has a massive effect on calming you down and bringing much wanted peace in a very, very uh, um, cacophonic sort of environment. We're surrounded by cacophony noises, um, and we create a lot of those ugly noises ourselves, uh, being the things that we think about, uh, the things that we say, 
So just being silent is something which allow us, allows us to notice things that we wouldn't normally pick up. And the last structured point to come out of this wonderful book by Ryan Holiday is that your peak state is only possible when you limit your work hours and you embrace sleep because the bottom line is that we need huge slabs of silence or in, in, inactivity in our days um, that will give us a huge advantage. So we need to practice a lot and we need to practice a lot using deliberate practice but we also need to marry that up and, and supplement it and complement it with enough sleep. Um, and it's something which troubles me because uh, for the past 21 years, ever since my mother passed away, I don't get very much sleep at all. I'm happy to function on four or five hours a night. And for those who are Facebook friends of mine, you'll probably know that I'm posting well into uh, midnight and I've got my 5am club where I'm in the city by 5am or 5.30 and delivering my, my posts throughout the day. But the last point is also an important point because stillness also influences our physical and our spiritual abilities as well. Because when you're silent, when you're quiet, when you're at peace, the chemicals that are being uh, passed around your body are also influenced. Uh, because when we're agitated, when we're excited, when we're on alert, um, we've got chemicals like cortisol and, um, and adrenaline passing through our veins, which don't allow us to relax. They don't allow us to be peaceful and to access our rational part of the brain and to access our subconscious. So we need to understand that there are ways of tapping into that, those, uh, those powerful uh, thought processes, but you can't do it when you're pissed off. You can't do it after you've had a fight with your partner or you've had a fight with your children or you've had a fight with your workmate or you've listened to other people being agitated and fighting. That's why, you know, living in a peaceful neighborhood or living in a peaceful household is really, really important because it allows us all to live a better quality life because when you're at peace, you are able to tap in to better quality decisions because just the chemical reactions, the chemical soup that you have in terms of uh, the endorphins uh, and, uh, um, and uh, all the other positive chemicals are only available into, in your body and will only influence your mind when you're at peace and when you're in a calm state. So I think I'll finish off there. So thank you very much for joining me on Jim's 5am club. I'll start heading back to work. Let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, and most importantly, Let's take some points out of this wonderful book by Ryan Holiday on Stillness is the Key and tap into the peace and quiet that we have to, uh, to enable us to uh, live um, a better quality life and to be able to make better quality decisions and to not stress our bodies, not to stress our minds and to, uh, to live um, as we're destined and as we, uh, we should be living because it is our birthright to live in peace and harmony with each other and to also create peace and harmony for those around us. Thank you and uh, that's my third vlog for the day. I'm, uh, I'm well over 800 now. I clocked up 800 this morning. I, don't, I no longer want to make a, uh, a fuss over how many vlogs I do. Um, my next um, key uh, threshold is when I get to the thousand and then once I get to the thousand that'll be the benchmark and the baseline 
for me to continue on improving and seeing where I can take this whole concept. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey and we'll chat again. Yasas, take care and bye for now.